hi folks, now you're very welcome back now to another piano recording tutorial uh, from Celtic Links. And we're delighted to be back with you at last because we've had so many requests coming in. And of course asking, Jerry, are you getting on with the tutorials? And I said, yes, we're getting on with them now. And thank you so much for waiting. So today we're looking at uh, an Irish jig called the, the Irish Washerwoman. Now we know it to be an Irish jig, but possibly it could be English of old could date back to the 17th, 18th century and maybe have origins in another tune. But uh, one thing I do remember was uh, growing up and learning the tune as a young boy, I remember asking my mother about who the Irish washerwoman was. And she says, well, Jerry says, you're actually looking at it. She says, I'm Irish, I'm a woman. She says, and I do all your washing. So I said, I left it at that and I proceeded to learn it and then always have it in my repertoire when I was performing. So. As usual in the tutorials today, we'll, of course, we'll take you step by step with the right hand, uh, the left hand, pushing uh, both hands together. That's the part people really love. And of course, in the music then, of course, I have documented some of the bases I like to put in with it. And I've, I've pinpointed some specific fingering that might help you as well. And of course then, uh, the music then is there to be downloaded on the link below. And it would be great if you did that because that will help uh, support the channel. So without further ado, let's get on and start the lesson. Okay, great. So uh, looking at the actual music for the Irish Washerwoman, um, it is written in the key of G major. And uh, one of the first things to do uh, when you identify the key, we identify the key by the keys, that little F sharp there written uh, on the fifth line there, right beside what you call the treble clef sign. And one of the first things I always find to do is good is to actually play the scale that you're going to be playing the tune in. So maybe it might be best, and it would always give us a, a point in time to be able to set up our fingering for this tune. So if I look at the piano accordion, take my hand down to the piano accordion, and always remember that um, when I started up the playing that my bell is sort of closed here. You can leave your left hand just sitting here for the moment, because we're not playing the left hand just yet. So it'll, it'll, it'll find its own thing to just let it sit there, because you have to actually pull it out. Um, so as I play the scale, I take my hand up to the accordion, I'm going to play the actual scale of G major, and I'll play it very slowly like this, and here we go. So it's... And of course the notes we played there are G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, with a fourth finger, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, and G. And really, to be honest, that's really the note you're going to be looking at. A lot of white notes in this tune, apart from the F sharp. And maybe if we have an odd grace that we might put in during the tutorial, but that is basically going to be the tune. So they're the notes you're going to be generally looking at for, the, for this tune. Um, also then, looking at what we call the, uh, the time signature, we then see a 6 over 8. And some people might say, well, Jerry, what does 6 over 8 mean? Well, pretty much 6 over 8 for jig times basically means you're counting to six in every bar. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you would tap your foot then, generally, not, you wouldn't tap your foot now six times to the bar, you wouldn't be able to, but not that you'd have some ankle, but you will be able to tap your foot two times to the bar. So you will notice that when I get into the tune, I'd probably be saying, don't forget to emphasize on the one and the four. So for instance, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this will then set you up very nicely then for how the music is played and, and how you get the actual pulse or beat of the jig. Okay, so without further ado, we'll get into actually playing the tune now. Okay, so now we're looking at the right hand, we're sitting up straight, my back strap. Uh, remember, I should say that I have a back strap on me while I'm uh, playing this accordion, because I have the accordion on me for quite a while. So I'm sitting up straight, the accordion is sitting on me, um, I'm ready to put my left hand in here, that's steady, and I have my arm, and really, when I play the accordion, I'm not really slouching over it or sitting back like this. Remember, I don't want to get any repetitive injuries because you might be practicing maybe for 20 minutes or a half an hour. So as we get into start the tune, I bring my hand around and I'm going to place my hand for the first notes. And of course, reading at the music there, the first note I have written here, 
And these are two notes, and these are what we call a little introduction. They aren't um, part of the first bar. So the first bar actually starts when you play the B note. So just to say that, that's, and that is called an actual upbeat. So you're starting the tune on an upbeat. So here we go. So my fourth thing is on this D note here we are in the accordion. And I go one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I might play that again, uh, just to make sure I played all the notes correct. And uh, you will notice that coming down then towards the end of the second line of the music, you'll see this one, finger one, with a bracket over it. Bass the tune means that we play the first half twice, the second half twice, and then you can repeat the tune if you want to. But the first time round bar means that when you come down to that point there, the first time round bar, it means you play those uh, notes there, and then the second time around, you go back to the first bar, and when you're coming down to play the second time, you actually skip the first time and go into the second. You'll see the second time round bar as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I might just stop there and I might say, okay, my bell is out enough here now. Because you remember, if you lose control of your bellus, you're going to be probably losing control of your fingering as well. So have the bellus at a certain amount, an arm stretch, and then decide to bring it back in. And on this bar here, I'll bring it back in now. And I go, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Out we go again. One, two, three. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And as we said, this first time round bar here means basically that we're ready now to go back to the first bar again to repeat it because we have repeat signs there, the two dots. And I'm going to go back to the first bar. Don't play the intro part. I'm going to go back to the B note again. There you see the beginning of the first bar. And here we go. My bell is looking okay, so I'll leave it there for the moment. And I'll play the tune again. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, four, 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 five, six. I'm gonna wait here, I'm gonna pause, remember. Remember, I'm not going for what we call the first time round bracket, I'm going for the second one. And that's at the beginning of the third line. So you're with me now. And I'm gonna go on to the B, G, and G here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I end there on that D note. And that's setting me up then, righty then, to go into the second part. Remember now, have your accordion on you, strapped onto you. You're strapped into it, it's not going anywhere. Very good. And we're looking at the high G, a high G note there. And I'm going to play it here with my fifth finger here. And remember, the second note you need in the second note will be actually an F sharp. Okay, so I'll go for it. Uh, and have it after one, two, three. And remember, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So, and one, two, three. Now, just at this point, I'm going to stop here because I see a trap immediately here. We have to go from this note down to this note here. And at this point, you might actually want to watch your recording, you know, intently for this note here. Because you're going from this one, two, three, and I would then be inclined to look down to get this note. Now, I do remember teaching some students and they persistently wouldn't look down. So they used to go one, two, three, and then they'd look down and miss the note. Or I've been trying to look on this note before I play it. 
So I'm just going to play that again because there are these little traps that come to the tune. So we go one, two, three, look down and have it. Four, five, six, look down. One, two, three. Maybe another little look to get your B. Four, five, six, wait, take a pause. I'm going to bring my bellows in. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Lovely. That brings you in, and my belly is just coming in very nicely. I'm then going to go back to the start of the second half, which is back to my lovely high G. I gotta go back up. I gotta get my fifth finger up, and here we are. And we go one, two, three, wait. Four, five, six, one, two, three. Get your B. Four, five, six, lovely. Take my bellows in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now remember now, this is the second time around, and on the second time around, I'm just gonna put a little finish on it. So I'm gonna skip the first time round bar and go to the second time round bar. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and off. Very good. That's just a little ending I have. Remember the tune is written out here that you can play first half twice, second half twice. So, and on the plane, the second half twice, then you just have a nice little landing for it. But remember, the tune can be played round and round and round and so forth. And we'll come back to later on in other lessons, how we can do different ornamentations and rephrase the tune and so forth and so forth. Great, okay, so the light is just sticking around and we're now going to get into, and we're going to play all the right hand, the right hand, first part twice, the right hand second part twice. And when I'm going to do a course this time around now, you're going to probably hear me emphasizing the sort of one and the four count of it. And I'll try and count it along because that gives the whole jig the sense of its drive, its pulse, and how you tap your foot basically, because to an Irish jig, you generally tap your foot twice to a barrel. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so forth. Okay, great. Okay, so my left hand there sitting there, he's happy there. Not doing anything yet, he'll have loads to do in a few minutes. So right, so get my hand set up, my bellows is in, and I count it in one, two, three, four, five, six, emphasize, one, two, three, emphasize. Two, three, four, five, six, one, 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 two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five, six, one, 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 two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five, six, well, two, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five, six, second time round, bar. one, two, three, four, five, six, Look for your high G, get it? Lovely. One, two, three, look. Four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. One, 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 two, three, four, five, six. Wait, here we go, high G. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, and 
emphasize one, two, three, emphasize one, two, three, emphasize one, two, three, emphasize, emphasize one, two, three, wait on to my second time remember one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and off. Lovely. Um question obviously will come up, Jerry, how do you emphasize the, the notes? What you actually do basically is you have to give the bellows for emphasizing the pulse a little bit of a tug. So it's a little bit of a thing like this, like this. This is what you have to do on it. And you don't really want to be too jerking it or like this because you'll get this sort of a warble into your tune. And if I just show you like this, if I start to do this on the tune like this, which will be incorrect. <laughs> now I can tell you folks, I swear to God, people are going to run out of the room and say, well, do something or take that accordion off the fella. Because that's what happens to beginners accordion. They have this jarring night and say what on earth is he trying to do with the accordion and he said well i'm trying to emphasize the first and the fourth beat but you're only driving people nuts so what you really have to do is and by and large we will come back to uh, tutorials on this you have to kind of it's like uh, leaning on a person a bit hard and leaning a bit and a bit more like that and if i kind of pull it here I'm, I'm pulling the bell a certain, but then I'm going to pull it a bit more and a bit more. You can't really see it, but I'm actually putting a lot of effort onto it. So remember, if you kind of, I'll play the right hand like then you'll kind of hear what I mean. So I want something like this. It's that sort of cut. Boom. Boom, that kind of sound, yeah, da, da, yeah, and a kind of gradual little draw, a little draw on the note, um, rather than, as I said, the quick chair, because, no, forget about that. Now, I do realise this may take a lot of practice, and you just, and a good way to practice is just basically maybe say, record yourself playing it, and then play it back. So, don't worry about it, that's why we leave the bass there for, for, for on its own there. So remember, when you're trying to get that emphasis, don't be afraid to go into a dark room on your own and lock yourself away when nobody else hears you. But by the way then, you should come out then really playing, saying, hi folks, you know, listen to this. This tune really sounds well now because if I play the tune like this, you know. Say, well, I don't really know what's going on with that tune. There's nothing, there's nothing driving that tune. There's no sense of the beat or the pulse to it. Oh, I, said, I, don't, I don't really like that tune at all. People get up. But if you play the tune like, you know. People say, God, is that the same tune? He said, it is the same tune. But <laughs> I'm just playing it better. So we want to work on that. And as I said, on the first and the fourth. So basically when you look at the music itself, you're probably fine. Hey Jerry, you know what, you're right. I'm probably cutting of the six quavers, the second and the fifth note, they're short, you know. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. And that's probably what you're going to start in. As you start to speed the tune up, you'll probably um your hand will actually do that work for you. It'll know I have to play this in a certain time and then probably that by the sense of the beat I need and the tune, it'll start to actually cut a little bit of time off the actual, the middle notes of the three quavers. Yum, ba 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 And you might even find yourself playing a little bit of staccato. But remember, don't try to get to that stage until you've got to the stage where basically you've got all the notes correct uh, you've got all the fingering that you uh, enjoy playing the fingering on it and then you've got it into a sense of time one two three four and remember the count is very important the count goes one two three four five six one two three four five six remember you're not going one two three four five six one two three four five six 
You'll never get any dancers to like you if you play like that. Trust me, I've been years of playing for dancers and they're got very, very, very critical of traditional art musicians. But anyway, that's the story from the day. Let's, delighted you got that far. And I think what we'll do is now we'll come back and we'll have a look at the left hand. Right, great. Okay, so now we're on to the part that people absolutely adore on the accordion, the left hand. So as I've always said in my previous videos, look, at it's a piano accordion. It's there for a reason. Do play it. But also, I would also say, you know, uh, do learn to play it sort of decently well. So, look, at we'll get on. And we'll, I've written some of the bass on the music there. And you don't have to play all these exactly as written here. We can simplify them a little bit as well. I know that people may have, you know, this is a, a 96 bass accordion. Uh, some people may have 12 bass accordions and so forth and so forth. And some people may say, oh, look at Jerry, I'm not going to be playing all them black notes. <laughs> just give us a few of them anyway. So look, at, we'll, we'll start off and I'm just looking at the music here myself. And remember, when you put your um, hand into the accordion, it's just good. Remember that your strap here should be tight enough. Now, Shouldn't be tight enough that you're going purple in the face and I'm going to call a doctor for you. Just remember that um, it's not cutting off your blood supply. But you don't want to have this too loose because it does have to hold your hand. And your hand should hold the position so it can go right from the top to the bottom. When I put my hand into the accordion, and we'll probably show it here uh, in, in, in a close-up fashion. I'm looking around for where I get what we call the C bass. And generally, the C bass in the accordion, you generally find them with a little dint or a little mark in them. And I think in the last tutorial, we've gone through some of the bases as well. So you could always look back on, I think we did one with the Kerry Polka and we did one with Molly Malone as well. Look back on those. We were only learning into the tutorial for today. We pointed to some of the bases, but we carry on. So look, at, I have my C bass and I generally play what we call the solo roll. This is a C bass, the G, the D. I generally play that with my third finger. And, I like to, and then I play what I call the major roll here. And again, we pointed this out in the previous tutorial with my second finger. So I'm going to do that today. I think that's the, I, I, generally speaking, that's the way a lot of people play the accordion with those fingers. But you can use five and four if you like, um, or sorry, four and three, but I like to use three and two. So I put my hand in, I found my, my C section. The bass I want to start off, because we're in the scale of G, the key of G, we're going to start off with the G bass, and I'm going to move right one up there. I'm going to keep my C and my C major here. I'm going to move straight up. Now make sure you're not moving across. <laughs> going across there, going there. You're going right up. And here I come on to my G bass. So I'm going to play that for you now. And remember now, I know, I remember someone asked me, how many basses do you play on this left hand? There is a count of six uh, to the right hand, but we only want a count of four to the left hand. So some notes are generally going to miss out and going to be probably played on their own. And we'll come back to that when I do both hands together, okay? So just now, we're just going to play the bass. So I'm going to start, I'm going to play in the music, so I'm going to play my G and G major. <laughs> Lovely, play nice and light like that. <laughs> now I can do the next thing, I can play G and G major again in that bar, or what I've designated in the music, if you wanted to move to the D, the D, you can play this G, G major, and switch to G, and come back to G, G major. It's what they call uh, slash chords in the, in, the, in the music idiom, where I play the G and G major, and instead of playing G and G major again, I'll just play D and G major. So I'll play the left hand through like that, and of course, if any comments on it, you can always come back on the channel and let me know. And I will simplify it as well. I'll play just the, 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 a, 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 the slash chords, I might leave them out and just, uh, play it more simply as well as I go through it. But I'll go to the bass from here we go. So we start off with G, G major, there's a D, there's your G major, G major, G and G major, D and G major. Now I'm going up to this bar, I'm in my third bar. Don't move your bellows, wait. I'm gonna go from G up to D, up to A, and I'm gonna find my A minor chord. And I'm gonna play A and A minor, and I'm gonna switch to E and A minor. Now that can happen to what I've just done there. You can find this happening all the time. Go back to your A minor, but remember to get to this button. So I think you might find that actually tricky. And what you can actually do, if in the music you just want to play A, A minor, and instead of going to the into the A minor, you might say, I just want to play A and A minor, A and A minor at that point. Don't worry about it. But if you want to go to E and A minor, there you have it like that. The next bar, find your way back to the D. Now remember, this is very slow. 
It's not in time, it's snail pace because your hand is learning where it's got to go. It's like a beginner driver. You're on the D base here, and I'm not too worried as well about my bellows. <laughs> Is it in or is it out or is it in Alaska? Don't worry about it. I'm just worried about getting my learning because this has to be done blind. You, you, you don't look in the mirror, you have to learn this. So don't worry about all those things, okay? I'm on my D bass. And I have here, if you want to go to D7, could be nice at that point. Or if you want to stick, D, D major. D, D major, that's grand, no problem there. Come back down, do my G, G major. I can do G, G major again, or I can do D, G major. G, G major. Then I do G and G7 if I want that there. Come down to my C. And then a big jump I want to do this, I'm gonna to go to D7, oh lovely. And then I'm gonna come back to my G. And D and G. Now, that's what I have written there. I'll play that more simply now for you just this time because I do reckon that there might be some people just learning the accordion and might say there's too many black notes so I'll just play it simply now without the slash chord so I, and I'll call it out as well so here we go so it's G, G major G, G major G, G major G, G major wait a bit up to D up to A get A minor A, A minor A, A minor wait come back down to D D, D major, D, D major, wait, go back to your G, G, G major, G, G major, G, G major, G, G major, wait, go to your C, wait, go up to your, just your D bass, D, D major, and then come back down to your G, and G, G major, and G, and G major, lovely, that would be perfect for a beginner starting off on the accordion. You can then explore then to putting in the other versions of the chords we have there lovely so i hope you know you're still with me <laughs> you're, you're still, you haven't pa passed out now with all this learning um so look we we'll move on to the second half and i might just pull my bellows in just pull it in um get settle my hand again find my g bass we're starting at the second half now and we're on we're in the second uh, second bar of the third line and we want a new bass here coming in. I'll show it to you now. Here we go along. So we start off, and um, we're actually on, um, I'll just count the bars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're actually on bar 10. I haven't noted the bar, but we're actually on bar 10. So here we go on the second half. So we have G, G major. If you want the D there, back to your G major. Now, tricky one here, I'm going up to E minor. So there's G, there's D, there's A. And up we go, and there's E minor. And it actually doesn't might be another little mark on your recording as well to show you the E bass. I don't want E major, I want E minor, E, E minor. And if you want to go to B and E minor, lovely, tricky now it is, or you can just stick like we did in the first half, E, E minor, E, E minor. Come, wait a minute, come back down, down through your A bass, get to your D. Oh, that's lovely, I have my D. If we want to play the A with the D, that's great, okay. Stay in the D. So look at, remember you're saying, find, if you lose your way, it's a good question, but if you lose your way, find yourself again, C, G, oh, there's my D, and I'm coming into the fourth line. D, D major, A, D major, down to C, C major, G, G major, C, C major, G, G major, and just on this first time round bar here, I'm going up to A minor, A, A minor, you want to come back down to the D, you want to go to D7. You want to come back down and go to the G. And to the D and the G bass there. And then of course you repeat the whole thing. I'll just play one more time to repeat it to go in to finish off the tune. So we're starting off there and our G bass, this is the second bar on line three. So we go G, G major, D, G major, up to E minor. There we go, E, E minor. If you want to play just the B there, or if you want to play E minor twice, just do that. E minor, lovely. Wait a minute, come back down, find your D bass, lovely. There's your A, the D major, D, D major, A, D major, back down to your C, lovely, C major, G, G major, you might pull the bass in now, C, C major, G, G major. At this point, I'll skip now the first time round bar, go to the second time round bar. I'm going to go to A minor. If I want to E and A minor, I'll do that. If it goes wrong, don't worry about it, look it. Go back to A minor. Go back and find it. 
but if you think it's tricky and you find that you're always going from this to this it always happens all the time just go a a minor stick on a a minor come back down to your d bass choose whether you want to do the d d major or d7 and then finish on your g and to finish the tune actually you could actually finish the two the g and g major together so <laughs> now that's a bit of intensive workout isn't it <laughs> my god your brain must be overloading what i would do as a beginner i would probably stick to keeping the basses very basic the g bass the d bass the a bass the a minor bass the e minor bass and maybe as i said as i demonstrated them but i would say to you that depending on your level if you're an intermediate level player this would probably be easy for you if you're just starting off I will stick to the very simple basses, just the G, the D, the A minor, the D, E minor. And then as you grow into getting better, then actually put um, the more uh, the difficult uh, choices on the bass. But I would say do make a choice because um, uh, your muscle memory has to kick in. And if you, come, if you practice on a Monday, it's only going to change it on a Tuesday. <laughs> you, won't, you get up the next morning, you won't know anything because your brain won't keep the information, just dump it. So stick with the basics and um, do as it persevere with the left hand i know it's a bit of a people think it's a bit of a combine hard with this left part or work work with it anyway and um try your best and then she'll look at uh, we'll see you now uh, in the next part of the lesson for pushing uh, the two hands together okay great okay so now we come to the part which uh, really people really really love and that's putting both hands together and it is it is a uh, uh, a time and a place. There's a time and a place for everything people say, and um, maybe a time and a place to go into a dark, stay in the dark room on your own, and then say, you know, uh, oh, I'll come out for a bit of light and get me a cup of tea or whatever. I might need more than that after I play this accordion. But don't forget now, um, hope you're enjoying the lesson, and if you are enjoying the tutorial, please, it would be great if you like and subscribe. That helps the channel immensely grow. It'd be great for that. Okay, so uh, let's get on now, and I'm putting both hands together. I'm going to take a deep breath, and remember, don't forget to breathe in and out as you're. Playing, playing the thing. So I get my hand set up and my, I'm counting in. I've got my bass C and my G here. And it will be rough, lads. Don't worry, boys and girls, or whatever. You know, it will be rough, folks. Don't worry about that. This is all, a, 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 you know, a layering process. But mark my words, you know, when I started playing the accordion, I had to go into a room my own because my brothers and sisters played the fiddle and I said, Would you get that accordion away for us? They, they, I said, Mammy. He needs to go down two rooms or three rooms. And then my mother said, well, put him outside. <laughs> so I ended up going out to the car shed to play the accordion. Oh, my God, oh my for an instant, I actually loved. <laughs> so, true as God. And uh, when, you're, when you're playing the accordion, you do have to learn to play this really well because you will fiercely upset um, uh, other instruments who are not as loud. Or another trick is just play with other accordions <laughs> that you can give out to each other. So anyway, look at Let's get on with this. So we'll start off with my fourth finger and I go after after five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And here we come to the part where I mentioned you have four bases to six notes. So five, six, and you'll see it now. One, two, three, four. So you'll notice there on the one, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, four. Five, six, and you notice straight away, oh, I see, Jerry, what you're talking about now. I'm just going to put my bass in. I see what you meant when you said the second, maybe, and the fifth note might become incident, or it might become shorter. They have become shorter by putting the relevant pulse and beads into it. And actually, now you see, they're not actually getting the bass aligned with them. Because basically, if I play the tune like this, <laughs> I'm telling you, you'll be... <laughs> So we said, hold on, lads, we came here for a G, we didn't come here for an Irish Waltz, you know what I mean? So <laughs> do, not, do not do this under any circles. Persevere with and make sure you do it this way, okay? Because it is an Irish G and it needs four bases to the bar, okay? You know, sometimes you will find the accordion people, traditional accordions, I should say, uh, don't leave bases out all the time. I would suggest that that is a, a lesson for another time and another level because they might be experienced musicians and they might be not opting to play the bass. When I was playing, I was always told that this is an accordion, piano accordion, it has the bass there. And when I was playing on my own, long before I had microphones, because I, I, when I it was only, 
it was only when I got better they put a microphone in front of me. He said, oh, I don't want to hear him. Like, you know, so. But then the next year they found, oh, Jerry's getting better. Oh my God, give him the microphone. And actually put a mic- microphone on his face because he plays that well as well. And I remember playing in the Irish Dancing Fashion and the, kind of the World Irish Dancing Championships and all that. Um, and, uh, oh my God, that's great. You're really good at the bass because it keeps the rhythm going. So that's where you persevere on it. Anyway, so look at, let's get on with it. And you'll find that maybe the one, the two, and the five in every bar, you'll find, oh, I see you, Jeremy. There's no bass played there. And that will give me the sense of the jig. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait. A minor, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, wait, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, wait, one, two, three, wait, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, lovely, now we're going to get it, so remember when you're putting the two hands together folks, I would probably separate them up maybe into separate bars or maybe two bars at a time take it very slowly and remember you're playing the actual easy basses no slash chords being played because you have a lot going on okay so here we go so after one two three four no bass on the first note it's five six one two three four five six very good one two three four five six Wait and settle up to your A minor. Lovely. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait. And when I say wait, I mean take both hands off the accordion. And I'll explain that in a minute. I'm going back to the second line now. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait. One, two, three, wait. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I go, I play the tune around again, of course. And why I just say is when I say wait, I, I ask you to take your hands off the accordion because if you play this, like, you know, when, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you're waiting. <laughs> You've got this tune going on and of course, the, your, your, your bass will end up in Alaska there somewhere. You'll have to pull it in. So I'd always say, you know, Take it bar by bar, wait, take your hands off. Don't take your hands off physically off the accordion. Just so you make a waiting time. So I'll actually do that uh, that first half again and then um, we'll go on to the second half. Okay. So here we go with the first half. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, one, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we go round again. And then we come to the second time bar as well. So you would know that from the right hand. Okay. So let's now look at the uh, the second part of the tune. And I'm going to start off with my fifth finger on the high G. Remember, get myself started. And get my bass to G bass. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three. Wait, look down. Four, five, six. Now tricky. If you want to move the E minor, it's all the way up here. But I will say at this point, for people who haven't got the E minor bass, stay in your G bass there. But I'll just play the G minor bass here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Down to my D bass. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. C bass. One, two, three. G bass. Five, six. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Wait now. Up to my A minor bass. One, two, three. Four, D bass. So I want A minor. One, two, three. D bass. Four, five, six. And a G bass. One, two, three, four, five, six. I might take a deep breath now. 
don't worry about it. Uh, I'm only learning the bass and putting the hands there. So as I said before, the bellows may be not synced, they may be out, it may be in. Don't worry too much about that. You can, when you're phrasing the bellows, that can be all done at later stage when you've got the tune learned right hand and left hand. So second part again, starting from uh, the, the high G. One, two, three, four, five, six. Decide now whether you want to go all the way up to E minor <laughs> or stay in the G bass. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did I see the G will just look, work just as well. And one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. C, G, C, G. And I'm gonna move now to my ending bar, my second uh, time round bar, A minor. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then off, basically. Now, I'm not too worried how it really sounds uh, if my bellows is in or out. And I'm doing that particularly in the lesson because this way, this way some of you may end up with the bellows out. You can't be too pernickety, you know, when you're learning. It's like putting um, the first coat of paint in and someone says, oh, I still see the other coat under it. Of course you can't because it's the only sort of trial. So wait and have perseverance. Pull your bellows in. So a couple of things to remember when you're putting both hands together. Number one, um, your finger may go astray. That's grand. That'll happen because only 50 cents or so. Go back and get the fingering right. Number two, as regards the basis, you may play the wrong bass and you may find, oh, I've got the wrong bass. But find out which bass you like. As I said there in the left hand on its own, you can just play the easy basses. And then, of course, then uh, the pulse of the beat may go astray. And of course, you may miss the bit of ornamentation. I didn't play some of the ornament, a small bit of ornamentation there as well, either putting the hands together. I just played it very basically. And you might find that the, the bass is a bit loud starting off. As you get to play the tune, as I'll play the tune for you now, um, you will get to know both hands independent of each other. And what I can say most before I close off this section is, do spend a lot of time on each hand separately. The one thing I used to find when I was uh, being asked about a piano recording lessons and when I was teaching for, uh, for, for the, the Cultus Culture of the Air and for loads of lessons I did for them, um, and the students come who took up the accordion themselves, they might be coming from piano or whatever it is, the one thing I found, they didn't spend enough time on each hand individually. So if you find you want to do a full day on the right and you're tired after that, just do that, and then come back and then the next day do the left hand, and then the right hand, and then the left hand, and then put the bow hands together. It's great. So, but eventually it should sound really well when you do put the bow hands together. But from, from one point, and I will come back during the tutorials on the, on, the, on the platform here to point out those things, how much time you should spend on these and how the things get better and, and more theoretical. But for today, it's just all about getting the tune with the right and left hand together. So the best look at that now, and I'll come back in a few seconds and I'll actually play the tune uh, without the counting as, uh, as a beginner should expect it to be, okay. Okay, well done on sticking with us so far, folks. That's great, I'm delighted. Do have the bit of patience. Don't be worried about how long it takes you, whether it takes you a week or six weeks. If you persevere with it and you like the accordion, um, you do it on your own, because when it comes out, it'll be like a swan. <laughs> um, what I'll do now is I'm going to play the actual tune very slowly with the right hand, left hand together, and how you might be saying, to give you a guide on how you might, you know, you say, they might be saying to me, Jerry, well, how should this sound maybe in a few months' time? And I'll play it then, I'll play it simply. Um, and I might put some of the bass, put it on, but what, and also I might just throw in some of the, you'll see some of the little grace notes we have there um, that are in the tune. You see in bar two there, uh, the little grace, the little notes there, the little grace notes, they're little embellishments, but uh, we're going to come back. Uh, uh, another time uh, with this tune again, maybe because Jerry was, you might say to me a comment on the channel, Jerry, we have this tune off quite well now. Uh, could we have a new tutorial on how we would embellish this and, uh, and maybe finesse it a little bit more? So that'll be for another day's work. But for today, trust me, I think you have a lot. And maybe if I have a partner or something sticking with you, they have a lot to listen to as well. <laughs> so, anyway, so here we go. We'll play it anyway. So. Thank you. 
And folks, that brings us now to the end of the tutorial and delighted and hope you're still breathing and alive and well <laughs> and not frustrated too much. Uh, it's a beautiful RS jig and it's worth uh, sticking with. As I said, things you have to note is just to stay and keep on your right hand until you have the right hand off really well. And when you have the right hand off and you're designating fingering for it, that suits you. Remember, you can't change the finger. The finger here is just a, uh, some points to help you through it. Then spend a lot of time on the lovely left hand. We all love the left hand. The accordion, it will get better and stay with that. And then, of course, then give plenty of time then putting two hands together. When you're putting the two hands together, don't worry about if the bellows goes out astray or the count goes off gradually if you stick with it, it would all come together so um i hope you enjoyed the tutorial um, and don't forget if you have any questions that uh, things i might have missed on the tutorial uh, please do leave them in the comments below me i'll always come back uh, in, in quick time to answer anything i can answer for you and of course then of course if you like the tutorials please do spread the news for us and to like and subscribe the channel that helps along as well and uh, for that um i leave you now in good stead i hope to hear from you they're all practicing well please god and we'll come back then pretty shortly now with another tutorial from Celtic Links. Okay, so it's bye for now.